from Studio 3 at Buzz TV. It's The Horse's Mouth with Tom McManus. All right, time for Campos Corner here on The Horse's Mouth. Of course, at Tommy Max, at my bar, and brought to our good friends at Dasher and at Yolo Rum. Coach Campos here, and Brian Sexton is here as well. Let's talk a little Super Bowl and Hi. football. What's up, Coach? Brian, how are you, See you doing? fellas? How we doing? We're doing great. You got your own corner now, huh? I'm on uh, the corner. It's, it's, it's perfect. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. How'd you like the Super Bowl? What'd you think after the game is over? How'd you feel about uh, watching that performance? Well, personally, I liked it, uh, especially uh, even in the first half, because as a defensive coach, you know, I like to see yep. guys, and they were flying around, uh, both were, teams. Absolutely. And so so that part I liked, but the ending obviously was exactly what everyone's looking for. You know, yep. you go to the end and one team makes one more play than the other team. So I was excited. I think the teams were well yeah. matched. Well, how about you, Ron? How well, do you feel? After you know what I liked in the first half? And I'm a defensive guy, too. I yeah. did, Sorry. Run the ball, stop the run. If you can do those things, yeah. you can win. Yeah. But I liked how Andy Reid and Kyle Shanahan were working each other, right? I mean, yeah. I think those are two of the best yeah. in yeah. the league, maybe the two best in terms of you're going to do this, I'm going to do this. Yep. Both of them use motion and window dressing and personnel groups to make you think they're going here, but they're going there. Yep. And I just, I thoroughly enjoyed watching the chess match between two great coaches. But down to the wire, as we all know. What are your thoughts on Kyle Shanahan not deferring the overtime uh, coin toss? Well, you know, that's a 50-50 shot because yep. really when you look at it, uh, you know, I personally would have liked to be going second because I want to know what I have to do, and I know I've got four downs to do it with. Right. But the opposite side of that is that if, if both teams scored and you go to the next right. deal, the guy that started first has a chance to win it with a field goal. So, I, you know, it's six or one half a dozen. Uh, it was fourth and four when they kicked the field goal. Yeah. I know if you don't make it, it's over. Right. But don't you assume that Kansas City's going to score seven, or can you not do that? Well, you know, they, they hadn't scored a lot of touchdowns in the game. True. Kansas City settled for another. What did Harrison Butker have? Two or three he, long he field goals. He and did. so, I, I mean, that was the smart play. And I think we, we put so much into analytics these days. I know. And we think everybody's got to be a gunslinger and go for it. Yeah. Well, uh, how'd that work out for the Detroit Lions, right? True. It didn't work out in the, right. in the NFC Championship game at all. So I thought Kyle made the right decision there. Um, you have to assume they're going to go down the field and get points, which is why I take points. Yep. I'm with Dave. I wanted the ball third. I didn't have a big problem yeah. with Shanahan taking the ball first. Yeah. No, I, I, I agree with that. However, it's the best quarterback in the game today, and he goes yeah. eight for eight. And yeah, the only the thing no, that – Right, right. The only thing that would – go anything towards what you just said about, you know, going for it on that fourth and four yeah. was that the San Francisco defense was struggling in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Yeah. They they had to start blitzing, and yeah. when they did, uh, Mahomes was five for five. So, yeah. you know, it, it's they all opinion. The <laughs> oh, right. That's why right. he's the coach of one team, I'm the coach of the other yeah, team, right. right? That's how it works. Right. Yeah. No, absolutely. What about when you look at our Jaguars, how far are they away from get to the big show, do you think? Well, listen, I believe firmly in Trevor Lawrence, but he does not have a great line in front of him. And if you watch the Lions, and Jared Goff is not, to, to my way of thinking, not at the elite quarterback. He's really, really good, yeah, yeah. but he's a step below those guys. But man, that offensive line for Detroit is so good. Yep. He got them to the NFC Championship game. Yep. The, if the Jaguars can build the wall in front of a six foot six quarterback, that's different than a six foot two quarterback. Mm -hmm. That six foot six guy with a long stride, yep. if he can feel comfortable I think this team can be back in the playoffs next year, and then you know how that one goes. Yeah, yeah. anything could happen. I saw where uh, Steve Spagnuolo, the defense coordinator of the Chiefs, he had a comment, I think it was today or yesterday, about Brock Purdy. He says, Brock Purdy was killing us in the zone, killing us, shredding us. We had to switch to man-to-man -to, -man right. to switch it up. No one gives that cerebral part of the QB's game enough credit. The question is, does Trevor have that cerebral part of his game? Well, I think, I think that's a little bit of a question at this point, yep. you know, because of how things are have transpired, but I'm with, with Brian from yep. the standpoint that the guy, you know, when he got hurt, it took away 
the part of the game that Mahomes has and Purdy, really, because uh, first of all, Purdy is not Mahomes. Right. But in the in the championship game, his runs were a big factor. Well, Against that Detroit, went yeah. away when when Trevor got hurt. Yeah. So if you if you go with the offensive line, you get that fixed, yeah. and then it it comes down to uh, him not getting hurt because yeah. I think that's a definite factor. Kirk, in the whole Kirk, thing. Christian, Kirk, yeah, that, nobody knew right. how how oh, how, yeah. how big a factor he was. Yeah. I, I smiled as I said to him, "You're worth twenty million dollars." He goes, "Yeah, I kind of knew that." Yeah. Right? I remember you got all yeah. the yeah. Yeah. grief about being twenty yeah. million dollars. Right. right. Like anybody else would let them say, "Well, you're not worth twenty million." Well, someone thinks that I am. Yeah. Right. Um, I, I do think he's got the cerebral part of the game. Whether it's refined enough, I, I got yeah. the sense in the post game locker room after the Titans lost, he knew that he had to go and work on that side of the yeah. game. Good. He had to take that to it. Oh, he's level. a worker. He's yeah. a tough kid. I yeah. love. I love him. But I that he's got to get that part of the game down. I think to move to that next level. This, listen, it's early. It's only yeah. February. The combine is coming up here. Yeah. But this is the best draft for offensive linemen yeah, in terms of, yeah. of numbers that I've seen in my 30 years yeah. in the NFL. Well, there'll be yeah. there'll be six or seven tackles taken right. yeah. in the first round. And there's a center from Duke and a center yeah. from um, Oregon. Uh, from right. Oregon. Yeah. Oregon. Yeah. Yep. They're all talking about him. And I think on the defensive side, there's plenty of interior free agent defensive lineman Correct. that could help you pretty much right away. Yeah. Because we need that as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, they've got, a, they've got a couple of balls in the air, right? you got to decide what you're going to do with Josh Allen. you got to yep. decide how you're going to handle Calvin Ridley sure. and when you're going to do the quarterback. But if they can get those three things done, yep. they can create some cap room. There's some tough choices, right? you got to decide on the right guard. You Cam? Gotta, yeah, Cam, the left tackle. I think you got to decide on Foye Aluakon. He's a $23 a lot million of money. Dollar guy. Hate to move him. But, well, no one wants to hear that. But right. yeah. But right but yeah. at the end of the season, right. you know, you saw him wearing down, yeah. and it's 23 million. Yeah. You drafted Ventrell Miller because you expected no, a young player to step in. But they can get to a position where they can go and chase a, a Matabuke from yeah. uh, from Baltimore if they want. For the record, linebackers get worn down when the linemen in front of you. Throw <laughs> exactly you right. Really after, <laughs> after a while. Yeah. You know, back to the offense, though. So, so Doug Peterson made it very clear. They're a pass-first offense. Right. When that passing game doesn't work, how do you even get the rest of it going? You know what I mean? That's when you need those beasts up front that can move people out of the way and give your running game a chance and then maybe the passing game reopens back up. well this team here in Jacksonville is not good enough right now yeah. to throw the ball all the time I agree. they have to have balance right. yep. they don't have a chase or a, a Jefferson or right. a guy that you know unless Ridley comes on yeah. I know Kirk you, you, they lost the middle of the football field but I'm not sure he's chase or oh, no, he's, Jefferson oh, he's, or one no, of those really guys good, Great but, slot player. so yeah. Yeah, oh yeah no, no well, question the we lost the middle of the field like it. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. but they really need to be able to run the football so whatever they have to do to get more physical to balance the game up that's where trevor lawrence is going to be the best he can be i'm replacing the center right yeah. let's be honest he got dead roached on the, on the most important yep. play of the season uh, yep. and if he's not pushing the quarterback back yep. because he's being thrown into him you probably score and have there's a chance a touchdown. to go for two there's a yeah, touchdown. Right? so i, I got to replace that that just doesn't work nothing Agreed. against him yep. and i'm also putting tank bixby in my rotation right. next year i believe he'll have enough comfort with pass protection yeah. that I can hammer the ball because because coach is right if you can't run you can't throw I agree you've got to be able to run you know who I think is going to be interesting next year Brenton Strange I see him as a use check for the yeah. 49ers yeah. like can line up at fullback get yeah. him in, in passing game yeah. let him block a little bit he's got that attitude remember when he threw Calais out of the club I don't yeah. forget he did that right? he's well, got the he's got the mentality to be a good blocker too one of the problems with fans and us media people I guess I consider myself a media Welcome guy now for sure oh, yeah the, one of the problems is that we jump too fast yes, on can. the draft the first one yes. you're right you're some right. of the guys that go and play well right away <coughs> have to right. they have no choice anton harrison is you know, great example. And, yeah. and he did a good job yep, well the rest of the guys necessarily didn't have to but you're going to see the movement after the first second yes. year that's into right. the third year then you know whether or not you had a good right. draft or when not. you have a quarterback that's going to take up 10 percent of your cap and you have a guy like josh allen that's going to take up a big chunk yep. you've got to have those jars on a shelf Absolutely. right you've got to have young developmental players players when you say, hey, we've got to let this guy go. Hey, we appreciate you, Foyer. Yeah. Here comes Ventrell Miller. I'm right. just using
using that no, as I an know. example, right? Yeah. Brandon Sheriff, thank you. Here comes Cooper Hodges, yeah. right? right? You've got Darius Williams, great year last year. Yeah. Christian Braswell, step in, it's your turn. Yeah. You, you've got to have those guys, yeah. which is why that big draft that the general manager gets crucified for, but that big draft was critical because it gives you developmental guys yeah. that will help you with your salary cap when you have a quarterback who is eating up a chunk okay. of it. You know, one of the interesting things about what you just said is the fact that if you look at the Dallas Cowboys, yep. you know, they had the tight end that just came out of nowhere, played really well for them. The reason being, they didn't have one. Right. Ferguson. We had, right. yeah, we had uh, Ingram. Right. So strange. We don't know what Strange yeah, would have right, been right, if right. he had to start at tight end and yeah. play the whole season. So, right. you know, that's what you have to look at. All right. Great job, guys. Yeah. Appreciate Happy to help. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Tony. Corner, yep. baby. Absolutely. Going all hey. right. There'll be more of Campos Corner here on the Horse's Mouth. Make sure you check out this conversation and many, many others at DailyNewsNetwork.com. Until next time, y'all stay safe and be cool out there. We'll see you right here on the Horse's Mouth. Cheers. The coach should be going to bed at night thinking about the athlete and how they're going to help that athlete improve. They shouldn't be worrying about how am I going to quantify their improvement or am I going to have to keep up with all this information. Those things that are kind of background to the coach focusing there on the athlete. And so what Dasher does is it takes all those side things away, allowing the coach to focus then on the athlete.